drawn. Hi Sandy, hi Rosie. I hope you had a good night, Sandy. I haven't been to Facebook yet. So I just seen, I glanced as soon as I turned my computer on, Facebook automatically popped up today because I didn't close it out last night. So I seen I had messages, so, um, but I haven't read any of them yet from anybody, so I'm not sure uh, who all they're from and everything, really. So I have, I'm going to check it when I'm done here. Um, but I hope you had a good night. Hi, guys. Our Bible reading in uh, Mark today is kind of sad. It is, well, it is sad. Um, the first part we're going to read is A Prophet Without Honor, which is a, which is a part of Jesus' life that really, like, touches home with me because... I'm not. I'm no miracle worker. Or any. I'm not comparing myself to Jesus in any way. I'm just saying a good person like Jesus. I was treated the same way in my hometown, that my hometown that I lived in all my life, and everybody knew me, and I knew everybody there, and it's and then they, they, they just all like turned bad more new people moved in and it was just bad people, bad people. I mean, people that do bad things. It was doing drugs, stealing, and it never used to be that way. And me here just, you know, going to church, reading my Bible, sitting outside reading my Bible every day and um, trying to work with the neighbor kids, trying to, you know, paint and stuff with them to give them something to do to help, you know, keep them distracted and you know, just trying to be there for people. And all they wanted to do was, the kids came sometimes, but then other times they came and vandalized the house or came and kept ringing doorbells and running. You know how kids are. But the parents is always like, I was always crazy. Like, literally, they thought I was totally insane. And they always, I was just a Bible thumper to everybody. And, um, you know, they wanted you to stoop down to their level and do the, things that they did and talk nasty and um, do weed and just everything like they did. I'm not saying, you know, that's bad. Enough. But I'm just saying that that's not the life that I wanted to live. Um, I have no problem with people doing what they want to do. But they shouldn't, you know, put other people down just because they don't want to live that way. Because I never treated them bad for acting the way they acted. I mean, I always treated them all good. Like, making everybody cookies at Christmas time. I'd make homemade sugar cookies and send everybody. Or I would help them. Like, when their animals got out, their goats got out. We'd go, we'd go chase their goats and herd them back in for them. And, um, you know, just helping everybody when you can. And being nice to them. Saying hi, you know. And... I was never um, talked about, was rude to them or anything for the stuff that they'd done that I knew was wrong. I never judged them. But you'll see what I mean when I talk about a prophet without honor. I'm not a prophet, but you'll see what I mean. In your hometown, it's just like you're never, we've known you all your life. We know who you are. You're nobody special. That's basically what it is. And you'll see that here. If you want to follow along, we're reading in the New International Version. And we are starting with Mark chapter 6, reading verses 1 through verse 29 today. Starting with a prophet without honor. Subject that touches me deeply. Jesus slept there and went to the home went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that he has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? 
aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense to him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. So sad. Now we're going to read, Jesus sends out the twelve. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. And it, what is not said here is said in King James Version when um, Jesus tells them to shake the dust off their feet as a testimony against that town. If that town will not accept them and wants them to leave and stuff. Because Jesus says in uh, the King James Version that it'll be worse for that town than it was for Sodom and Gomorrah in the Day of Judgment. Now we're getting into another bad, sad part of our Bible reading today, which is where we're ending Mark with John the Baptist beheaded. Yes. Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, prophet, was beheaded. And here is why. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miracles, powers are at work in him. Others said, he is Elijah. And still others claimed he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead? For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Mm whom he had married, for John had been saying to Herod that it was not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. They were sleeping together, as you see. But she was not able to because, wait, so Herodias nursed a grudge against John because John was saying these things, and she wanted to kill him. But she was not able to, because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John was greatly puzzled, yet he looked to listen to him. He enjoyed listening to John. Finally, the opportune time came, and she was sure she was plotting this all along, in her sick, evil, twisted mind. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guest. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her an oath Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? 
up to half of his kingdom now. What do you think his mother asked for? Her mother replied, the head of John the Baptist, she answered, on a silver platter, by the way. At once, the girl hurried in to the king with the request, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guest, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went and beheaded John the Baptist in prison and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. Sick, twisted woman. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. I don't know what she did with his head. I don't know if they got his head back to bury or she kept it and done something sick with it. It never did say, but what an evil woman. Well, that's where we're stopping with Mark today. Jesus hasn't heard the news of John being beheaded yet. We will get into that tomorrow, I'm sure. Our psalm today is Psalm 39. For the director of music of, or for Jedithan, a psalm of David. Oh, well, okay, it's just a word, sorry. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. So I remained utterly silent, not even saying anything good. But my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. Surely everyone goes around like a mere phantom. In vain they rush about, heaping up wealth, without knowing whose it will finally be. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I would not open my mouth, for you are the one who has done this. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. When you revoke and discipline anyone for their sin, you consume their wealth like a moth. Surely everyone is but a breath. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Do not be deaf to my weeping. I dwell with you as a foreigner, a stranger as all my ancestors were. Look away from me that I may enjoy life again before I depart. I am no more. And that was Psalm 39. All right, Pius, and ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 10. Whoever winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. All right, guys, well, that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. At the beginning, I was talking about how it was in my hometown. Mind you, I didn't wear wigs and um, stuff like that, that there, you know, to give people a reason to think I was crazy, by the way. I just started doing this when I did the Bible readings to try to keep it interesting, you know. But I never did this. I never done anything 
you know, to make people think I was crazy. They just thought I was crazy for not doing what they was doing and for loving the Lord so much, I guess. But as for prayer requests and stuff today, um, they're just still the same as they've been every day. Um, I haven't heard nothing new about Chris or Barb. Um, I know, I don't know. My sister put something on yesterday, but it looks like she blocked me and my friend, so we don't know what her problem is now, because she was talking to us the other day, so I don't know what's going on there, so I don't know what's going on with her mom, except for, she. I know she's still doing okay, because she had posted a video or something, and um, asked our other sister to show it to her mom, so I don't know whether she's still in the hospital, or she's in rehab, or she's staying with my sister, or if she's home, I don't know, but she's doing better, I mean, she's, you know, still alive, and doing good, so... And Chris, the last thing I heard, he was supposed to have a spinal tap, and that's still draining his lung and all this stuff. I haven't heard nothing new. But, like I said, I haven't really been on Facebook today, so... Um, so just please continue to pray for Christopher Serbak and Barb Post, and April Linda Thacker, Sherman Crabtree, and our dear friend and sister in Christ, Sandy, for strength and comfort. She goes through a great deal of stress, and she really needs... Um, God's healing touch and she needs to feel his presence and know that he's there and um, she needs to be given strength to you know fight off the devil and continue to you know stay strong in her faith and have a have a good life despite the devil trying to bring her down like he does all of us who um love the Lord. So with that being said, guys, I hope you guys have a um, good um, rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. I am going to go take my migraine shot now, because I have a migraine. I'm starting to get a migraine. I had a headache all day, and it will not go away. My eye is really starting to hurt, so... I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Bye, guys.